In Unit 2, we'll further explore topics of global impact of computing and we'll integrate other topics of big ideas throughout this discussion. So oftentimes when we uh, teach our course, we want to highlight the impacts of computer science and this is something that can be done every week. Each week in my class, I bring up some of the recent topics that are happening in computer science in the news and in other kinds of media. So for example, I use the ACM Tech News as a resource to be able to find content. So a suggestion is to check out ACM Tech News. The URL is on this slide and you can subscribe to that and three times a week you'll get a digest of stories that are really interesting and can drive some of the discussion with your students. So I use this as a cooperative learning technique and structure about once or twice a week for maybe five or ten minutes. So not a whole lot of time, but what it does is throughout the entire course, the students are understanding the impact that computing has in ways that they may not have considered in the, in the past. So here's just a few examples from this past week. So there's a story about how technology and computing helps those with visual impairments and uh, other kinds of disabilities. There's a topic on how computer bees help solve different problems. There's some issues of privacy and cryptography and also open issues of how the internet works. So it's companies and ISPs wanting to charge extra money for premium service. So these are all great discussion topics that teams of students could uh, endeavor to discuss uh, throughout the course in some kind of, kind of cooperative learning style. So you may put students in groups of four and just ask them in a round robin style to take one of these topics and give, give their opinion on it and what it means to them and to society. One thing we also talk about in the class is that technology itself cannot be labeled good or ill. So sometimes there's really good benefits of technology and those things can also be used in harmful ways. So just take for example the same mechanism that allows online child predators to, to seek out children also can be used to identify neighborhood offenders or others on the web that may be nearby. So there's apps for this and that kind of technology works both ways. There's also concerns about personal privacy in this digital world and the communications that we have, as well as that same beneficial use of technology having a counter where terrorists might use those techniques to also communicate secretly. Also in the same forum where online bullies can lead to suicide by those who are, are picked on. In another case is social media is allowing those to unite who are old friends and new relationships can be formed. So that same technology is independent of good or evil and can be discussed in your class as impact statements from either side. So a lot of the, the topics that will be studied in this unit uh, form a foundation at the core of computer science. So it's all about stories of zeros and ones and we ask you and we'll ask your students to read this first chapter of Blown to Bits. So it's all about bits and some of the stories that come out in this chapter as well as other things we'll introduce are, are very interesting. So politicians have been brought down by technologies and algorithms. Students have lost jobs because of things left on Facebook. And it's all about those fundamental zeros and ones that are prevalent in all of our lives. So the focus should be about understanding how in, in today's society these digital media affect us as you can see in the quote at the bottom of the slide. So it's often useful to talk about the founders and pioneers in the area. So there's an excerpt in this first chapter about Claude Shannon, who was the founder of the research paper leading to discussions of information theory. And the paper that he wrote on mathematical theory for communication provided this, these principles that guide the digital age today. He coined the term bits, and that provides the kind of understanding that the bit represents the fundamental unit of information. So when your students are studying physical sciences and talking about things like atoms and elements and, and uh, other, other things that are related to the, the core parts of physical science, we need to have our students understand what bits and bytes are and how that forms the foundation of computing. So how you might use the blown to bits in class, in my college class I frequently read from this book and assign readings and I know many other pilots, teachers in K-12 are also using this book effectively. So it's freely available, so it should be accessible to all your students from either school computers or those who have computers at home. So at the start of the course, I always ask my students to read the first chapter. 
which we also asked you all to do for in preparation for this first unit. So in this book, the authors use the idea of a, a koan to look at paradoxical statements. So things that, if you studied and reflect upon them, may yield some other wisdom about the true nature of something. So in the first koan called It's All Just Bits, it talks about how the illusion is made where at the very fundamental level, zeros and ones can be used to represent pictures, videos, photos, and all the kind of digital media that we consume on a daily basis. So underneath the hood, so to speak, are the zeros and ones that make all of this work. The idea also that perfection is normal. So the idea that you can make a copy of a digital artifact and it would be preserved intact completely as it was as the original. That, that brings up a lot of issues related to intellectual property, digital law, and other kinds of issues that could be discussed in your class. The topic of there's want in the midst of plenty, the, the thing that strikes me about that in my own life, when, when I graduated high school, and this dates me a bit, my graduation gift in high school was a 20 megabyte hard drive. And today you can buy multiple terabytes for $100 or around that. And in fact, when we're shooting this video, we're, we're, some of these shorter videos are three or four gigabytes in size in comparison to the size of the hard drives we had in the past. Also the processing power. Uh, we'll talk on the next slide about Moore's Law, but there's other various laws of computing that are established as kind of general rules of thumb. One of the laws is also Metcalfe's Law from Robert Metcalf, who's one of the co-inventors of the Ethernet, and it addresses the, the value of a network and how that, that value increases as a square to the number of nodes in a network. So there's even topics of economic theory involved in this and how companies may interact and, and other kinds of relationships. Moore's Law is something that Gordon Moore, who's one of the co-founders of now Intel, noticed several years ago, several decades ago in the 60s, where every 18 to 24 months, the number of transistors on a chip was doubling. So this is currently a challenge due to limitations at the atomic level, and we can see a lot of this in the limitations coming from the need to put multiple processor cores on, on chips or, or multiple cores that you may find in some newer computers that you might have. So some more koans that are discussed in the book is that more of the same can be a whole new thing. And this is how there's a disruptive technology in computing that very established companies if they don't address the observations that can be made, there's some exponential changes that could put those companies out of business. So there's some stories about Kodak, and you can also think about Xerox, and you know, 20 years ago how Nokia was the national leader, an international leader in, in mobile phones, and how some of those companies have struggled lately because of not being able to adapt to some of the changing technologies. Nothing Goes Away is another topic that we talk about with the students, in particular with the privacy and the issues of even their future employment. So students who are denied jobs because there's something on their Facebook page or Twitter pages. So the concept that data is persistent and can be mined over time and be analyzed in the future is something that we need our students to understand. And finally, the idea that bits move faster than thought. This is what partly is uh, described by Thomas Friedman in his book, The World is Flat, how our economies have been merged together, how different things can occur because of this phenomena of digital communication and what computing has brought about. So the, the concepts that are discussed in the, the Blown to Bits chapter that you, you may have read is how there's different call centers for radiology for processing x-rays that might even be offshored. I've heard examples of fast food operators in large cities where the actual order is being taken on a, at a remote site. And there was many examples recently of governments that have been overthrown because of social media and how the bits can move around and, and actually drive political thought within a society. So these are some of the fundamental things and the importance that bits and bytes provide. And we'll look at those topics from a more fundamental uh, foundational level in the next few lessons that are in this unit.